Let's play fans of biblical genetics. It's a rainy day here in West Georgia, so my plans for going out and filming in some exotic location were shut down by the weather. But I'm going to talk to you from my front porch, and I have a beautiful front porch, and I love sharing with you from my favorite places. Anyway, someone posted very recently on my biblical genetics Facebook page a very controversial question. The question was, what about angels intermaining with humans and what would the genetics have looked like and is that DNA still with us today? And my Facebook wall lit up. I mean, so many comments, so many questions, so many opinions. So I want to get into this since we're already dealing with it now. I don't want to deal with it again six months from now if I ever did a show about on this subject uh, about angels and Genesis chapter 6 and a Nephilim and oh man, it gets crazy fast because this spins off into something you might see on the History Channel about ancient aliens. This gets off into questions about Neanderthals and more the pre-flood or post-flood and all sorts of things like that. But look, I don't want to get so far into the weeds that we get lost. I want to do a what-if scenario. You know, what if this is really true in the way a lot of theologians think? Now, I do understand there's a huge difference in the theological positions that people take on the subject. And each position that I've seen has strengths and weaknesses. Now, I do lean in one direction. I don't necessarily want to tell you what that direction is, but I do lean in one direction. But even so, I understand that the position is not bulletproof. Because if you want to think that angels and humans had children together, then you have to say that all oh, angels have reproductive parts, that they have DNA, that the chromosomes line up with the human genome, and that the genes are in the same order. Because all those things have to be true to have a viable embryo. There are a lot of theologians, specifically since the Protestant Reformation, who teach that the sons of God in Genesis 6 are actually the human descendants of the godly lineage of Seth, and the daughters of man, therefore, are the female descendants of the ungodly lineage of Cain. This has some theological difficulties. Well, first of all, we know that Adam and Eve had other sons and daughters. Genesis says that. Also, if you consider an article I wrote in creation.com, it's called, How Old Was Cain When He Killed Abel? The answer to that question is going to answer what I say next. And that is, I don't believe that Seth was the third child of Adam and Eve. He was probably the next child born after Abel was murdered, and he was born after Adam was 130 years old. By this point in time, Adam and Eve could have been great-great-grandparents. Cain himself could have been a great-grandparent by then. In fact, if Seth is only Adam and Eve's third child, that means Eve is having, on average, a child once every 43 and a third years. There's 130 divided by 3. That's a long time between children. That doesn't seem to make much sense. So the old, where did Cain get his wife question is answered really simply. He picked a sister or his niece or his grandniece or his great-great-great-grandniece, whatever. There's plenty of women in the world by the time he has to leave the area where Adam and Eve were and he starts building a city. There's not only three people in the world alive right now, Adam, Eve, and Cain, because Abel's dead. No, there's probably lots of people alive in the world. But let me read to you an extended passage from the book of Genesis so we know the context of this. It says this in Genesis chapter 6. When man began to multiply in the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw the daughters of men were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide a man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be one hundred twenty years. The Nephilim were also on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came to the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were mighty men of old, the men of renown. So what I just read is a hugely controversial passage between scholars, between fellow Christians. There's a lot of ill-defined terms and ideas that are just once in the Bible, and therefore they're hard to really get our minds around. I mean. Were the sons of God really angels, and were they really procreating with human females? That's a very interesting question. Now, without even answering that, let's just assume it's true for a minute. And let's think about what the genetic implications would be. Is it possible that angelic DNA is still in humans today? My answer to that is no, for a couple of reasons. First, Noah, it is said, was perfect in his generations. He was a righteous man. He was not a sinful man. God uh, blessed him because of his righteousness. So I would assume that he didn't have Nephilim or you know, fallen angel DNA in his background. That doesn't seem to make much sense. But even if he did, so what? That DNA is in us today. You know what? We call ourselves human. So 
if this really did happen, then angels have to have very human DNA. In fact, nothing weird, because there's no weird parts of the human genome we can identify. Hey, this looks like it's from aliens. It's not true. I had a woman once, and I was in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. I had just given a talk, and she came up to me afterwards and started talking to me about the underground governmental labs where they were hybridizing angels, I'm sorry, where they're hybridizing demons and humans and how it's right there in the human genome. And I said, oh, hey, I just happen to have a copy of the human genome on my laptop. And I opened up my laptop and said, would you show me where that is? And she got mad at me. She started yelling at me crazy enough. She goes, oh, sure. Deny the obvious. And, and she started like walking after me as I'm walking away. And I had to sneak into a whole large group of people. And I just said, save me. And I stepped in a group and they closed ranks and she just kind of walked away. But oh, my, this whole question of alien DNA in humans is huge but it's not true. It's simply not there. We have sequenced thousands of human genomes today and people are people and they're not weird. And therefore I conclude also there's no angelic DNA unless angels are humans. Another question that I've gotten several times is, is it possible that the Neanderthals are the Nephilim? And to that I also say no for several reasons. First of all, Neanderthals are clearly post-flood. I have an article on creation.com, are Neanderthals pre-flood? And I answer it. No, they can't be. Archaeologically, they're post-flood. Also, genetically, they're post-flood because their DNA is in us today, but not in Africans, only a little bit in Africans, meaning that the Neanderthals were a people group that lived on the earth after the flood. They lived in Europe and Asia, and they were overwhelmed by a larger group of people who moved in centuries later. We call them modern Europeans, but because people are people, the Neanderthals left DNA behind, and therefore I carry Neanderthal DNA, and most of you do also. In fact, about 60% of the Neanderthal genome is represented in modern people, but only a little bit in Africa. So it fits the geographic dispersal of where we find the bones. Archaeologically, genetically, Neanderthals are clearly post-flood. They can't be Nephilim. I also note in the Bible that the Nephilim are all males. It doesn't say anything about females. In fact, angels are always males. There are no female angels as far as anyone can tell. So it's not actually clear that Nephilim could have children of their own. I assume they could, but it doesn't actually say that. So this old question of God maybe sent the flood to prevent the angels from corrupting the, the human genome. And therefore, you couldn't have a Messiah come because it wouldn't be perfect. You can't have a Messiah who is a product of a fallen angel. And... Yeah, that might be true, but the text actually doesn't say that. And some people try to, for some strange reason, they try to single out Ham's wife as being different. Maybe Ham's wife had Nephilim DNA. And therefore, the Nephilim DNA can pop up in people today. But wait a minute. What are you talking about? Ham's wife is one-sixth of the modern population. If Shem, Ham, and Japheth and their three wives are the founders of the entire modern race, each of those people is one-sixth of you. There's no way around that because the generations would have mixed between the flood and the Tower of Babel. Five generations between Noah and Peleg. If it happened during Peleg's day, which I kind of think, then the sons of Ham would have been marrying the daughters of Japheth and the sons of Japheth would have married the daughters of Shem and the sons of Shem would have been marrying the, the daughters of Ham. This is a gigantic mixture. There's one language, there's one culture, they're on purpose staying together. That is a recipe for family lines blending together. And then when God separated the nations at Babel, according to their Y chromosome lineage, the Y chromosome is the only piece of DNA that should show any differences. But even then, over thousands of years, Y chromosomes have spread around and, and merged. There's hardly a genetic way you can partition people because we came from one population, because we've mixed since. But that one population means that Ham's wife is the ancestor of everybody. If there's any Nephilim DNA there, it merged into the human population, and today we call it human DNA. So that's how we answer the question. No, I don't believe there's any Nephilim DNA amongst humans today. And I don't believe there's any Nephilim DNA on the Ark. But if there was, we would call it human DNA anyway. So the question is moot. You can't tell the difference. So I'm going to leave you with a quote from the book of Acts, chapter 17, the first half of verse 26. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. That just told us that God made all the people on the earth from Adam. That means we're all related to each other. That means we're all very closely related to each other because there hasn't been that much time since Adam. It also means that we're not made from angels. 
or from Nephilim or from aliens or any outside influence. All of our DNA comes from our founder, Adam, because Eve came from Adam also, by the way. This means we're equally fallen, equally in need of a savior. We're all in the same boat. No, people don't carry Nephilim DNA, period. So if you're interested in the subject, you can find me on Facebook on my Biblical Genetics Facebook page. You can find me on Twitter at Bible Genetics. You can find me on Parlor now, Bible Genetics or Biblical Genetics. You can go to the website, biblicalgenetics.com. You can find me on creation.com. I'm all over the place. I'm as many places as I can possibly be to get this message out. And finally, I want to give a big shout out to all my supporters who are helping me through the Buy Me A Coffee app. If you would like to support this show, there's a link just below.